Hello and welcome to Finding Balance in a Digital World. My name is Mark Hefner and this is uh, part of our digital citizenship curriculum we've been studying lately at NIS. And um, this one is about finding balance in your life. How do we balance digital media use in our lives? We use digital media every day from texting, streaming, TV shows, and gaming, all the way to using voice assistance or ordering our online our food online. For today's kids, it's a lot more than just screen time. So how can we, as students, balance our online lives with our offline lives? It starts with recognizing just how much media we use. And that's the first thing we're going to look at today. So let's get started. Finding balance in a digital world. As I said, we're looking at how do we balance digital media use in our lives. Our learning objectives for today is we will reflect on the common, their common online and offline activities. We will analyze and prioritize the activities that are most important to them. And we will identify ways to unplug to maintain balance between online and offline activities. Before we get started, let's watch a video. According to the video, what are some of the benefits being connected 24-7? Watch for that as you watch the video. Did you like the video? Now, according to the video, what are the benefits of being connected 24 hours a day, seven days a week? And you might want to write these down because these might come in handy later. Real-time access to weather helps plan outdoor activities or the clothing that you're gonna wear. Social media and messenger apps allow immediate communication and updates with other people. Search engines help people find information about solutions for things. And music apps enable people to create, share, and listen to playlists of their favorite music. All the activities in the video are examples of using digital media, which is content such as text, audio, images, and video, or devices that allow people to share information, to communicate, and collaborate over the internet, internet or computer networks. Digital media, and there is a slide for that one there. However, not all the actions in the video involved using digital media. Did you catch any that didn't? For example, what about the real life soccer match? What are some of the benefits of doing things offline that don't involve digital media? For example, what if you participate in sports because it's fun, because you get exercise, you get to compete with others? Or going into nature like the mountains or the beach can teach you about the world and help you feel relaxed. Hanging out with people in person helps you build relationships and get to know people. When you're in nature or with people, you experience everything with the five senses. When you're online, you usually only experience them with two sight and sound. So being disconnected from digital media has some benefits, but being connected has benefits as well. What do you think is the best way to balance the two? Media balance, using media in a way that feels healthy and in balance with other life's activities, such as family, friends, school, hobbies, etc. In today's lesson, we're going to think about ways we can, we can find our own sense of media balance. I almost couldn't say that. Now let's look at our handouts, the online offline student handout. The directions. Think about the different activities you do online listening to music, playing games, looking up information, and communicating with friends. Write down as many as you can think of. 
In the table on the left side, you write what activities you do online. In the table on the right side, you write when, for example, uh, on a Sunday afternoon and for how long. Part one refers to not only being on the internet, but to all activities involving digital media, such as watching television, gaming, using apps, etc. In part two, down at the bottom, think about the different activities you do online with others or by yourself for fun or other reasons. Write down as many as you can think of. What type of activities can you think of? For example, playing sports or board games, hiking, camping, or other outdoor activities. Just like before, we want to know when and for how long. Like a Saturday afternoon for four hours. In this next part of the exercise, we're going to review the online and offline activities you wrote down. Circle the two or three activities in each that you do most. Oh, we're not ready for this one yet. By now, you should have circled the two or three activities in the online activities as well as the offline activities that you do most. Now let's continue on with the lesson. What we're going to do is try to balance the activities you do the most. Look at the Balancing Act student handout. According to the direction, use the positive and negative feeling words to complete the first blank in each sentence. Fill in the second blank using, that act, using the activities you highlight on the online offline handout. For example, I am most happy when and I feel scared, I feel stressed when and this is what you would fill out. This is using the activities you highlighted is what goes into the blank, um, the second blank. Part of having balance means being aware of how different activities make you feel. If certain activities result in not so good feelings, that's a red flag. When you experience a red flag feeling, it's important to think about what's causing it and what you can do about it. One helpful thing might be to find ways to unplug. What do you think it means to unplug from online activities? The best meaning of unplug means to engage in activities that don't involve devices, apps, or the internet. Just get away from it all. What are some specific times you might want to unplug? How would you know when to do it? Take a moment to think silently about these questions. Then take turns sharing your responses with other people. If you're doing this exercise alone, use the comment form in Google Classroom to share comments of what you think of when you might want to unplug. Now that you've had a chance to think about it, some sample answers might be, turn the TV off when you're not watching it. Only watch one show. Don't click on autoplay. Turn your phone off. Limit the amount of time you game. Or turn off certain settings such as app notifications, location services, etc. Things that when your phone says, hey, play with me. Your phone doesn't control you, you control your phone. Choose a day or time when you don't use your phone or go online during dinner, weekends, nights after school, etc. You decide when you use your apps. Keep in mind 
There are a lot of strategies that will work for some people, but not for all people. Different strategies work for different people. Which ones are right for you? Think about that. Think about the ones you'd be most willing to try. And send your teacher a comment if you're working by yourself, or share with a partner if you're working with a friend. Now we've done part one already, which which was where we use positive and negative feelings words to complete the first blank in the sentence. Now we're going to look at part two, the reflection. Question number one says, do you feel that you have a good balance between the activities that give you positive and negative feelings, the ones that we did above? Why or why not? This is not a yes or no question. Please remember the why or why not. What is one step you can take to improve your feelings of balance between the two? Explain how you would balance your online and offline activities. However, there could be some things that might stop you from doing it. Question three addresses that. What might be hard about taking that step and what can you do to overcome those challenges? Once you complete the handout, make sure you turn it in to Google Classroom. Now let's look at balance for Alex. Write two suggestions for Alex to bring balance into her life. Each suggestion must have a hundred words. Let's read what Alex is doing. As soon as Alex wakes up, she checks Snapchat messages. On the school bus, she texts with her friends. In class, she does online research for a report. At home, she sits indoors and watches YouTube videos on a laptop while using her cell phone to post on social media. Check email and search for free apps. After dinner, she does homework using digital textbook. Then she plays video games, makes arts, edit photos until 30 minutes past bedtime. Obviously, Alex is out of balance. Now, I want you to write two suggestions to help her bring balance into her lives. And remember, each suggestion must have at least 100 words. If you have any questions, ask your teacher. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you get a lot out of it. Don't just think about this video as an exercise uh, on paper. Think about yourself and your life. Are you balanced or out of balance? Is your online life dominating your offline life? Try to think, as you can say, as clearly as possible and as honestly as possible to see if you can add balance to your life. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.